Hello there, welcome back. So now let's talk about a little bit this uh, pressure distribution, how to save it and some things that you can see in this plot. The first is also that I would like to point out that sometimes might happen that you are running Eggfoil and sometimes you start to getting uh, strange results, difficult convergence and whatever. So remember always is this init to initialize, but sometimes you run, it's not saving the polar. So the best way to solve those problems when you see that things are going out of control is just close Eggfall, open a new session, okay? That might happen. You have seen that Eggfall is really fast and the commands are very intuitive so you can reproduce everything you know, with no problem. But it might happen, I know, for, especially for beginners, it can happen a lot, okay? because you are putting too many things here and the solution gets crazy, okay? So I recommend you just to close it. I will do it, okay? So I, I read in a new plot, a new airfoil, see that this is a new airfoil, the polar, and we're talking about, uh, we're going to talk about that. So I will close that one and I will open a new one, okay? So be advised, no? Have in mind that. So I'm going to load a new airfoil and here in the air for my airfoil you have a short database but remember also you can go to this website uh the database here you can download many airfoils there but here we have a few airfoils and i will choose to read this one all oh, these six five to ten okay so i will the location airfoils six five to ten dot that okay open and see that it's okay this is the airfoil i want to point out something about this airfoil okay so this is a cdc6 that we have seen in theory that have this drag bucket and this other property but something that you have to be careful in airfoil is that having seen airfoil this is a seen airfoil okay and it's difficult we've seen seen airfoil is sometimes difficult to get convergence so be advised about that so see that we, we don't have many panels, so it might be a good idea to increase uh, the number of panels. So you go in PPAR and uh, mm. let me put uh, 200, enter, and you have here. Okay, so see here that we enter here, we, we get some basic information here, maximum thickness, okay, it's about no, 0 0.1, okay, so this can be considered raised in airflow, then maybe problematic, but it still can work, but it's tough about 0 0.06, it can be problematic. Okay, also when you have a small curvature radius here, but this case, I think it works. So let's work with this case, okay? So now I go into upper, okay? So you see that we're in B6. Let, 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 let's test that everything is okay. So I would run one preliminary case and see that we're getting the CP distribution Okay, for in the in this case. So the question might be, how do I save this one because I want to plot it? Okay, so we proceed in a similar way as the polars, but here we don't have the option to automatically save CP for each angle. Kind of unique to do it manually, but also you can parameterize this. There is no problem. Okay, so for instance, remember that you go here, uh, <coughs> duration point question mark uh, here. Uh, you have this option, you go here, CP, CP, somewhere right. And you can write this CP distribution. So for instance, I go CPW is, no, CPWR. See that it's telling you that it's going to save that in this directory with this name. You press enter, and now you go here and you should have it here open with sublime text and see that you have your distribution okay so it's saving everything one single file okay so it's not doing the separation between pressure suction side or top button or intradose extra or whatever but then you can do that manually okay so you can find you know what is the maximum coordinate and then this one you can create two separate files now this one will correspond information top the other button so it's not it's not a problem so see that it's quite easy you save it there so the other thing that now we can do, okay, so if you want to save it for another uh, angle of attack, just run, change the angle of attack and then save it. Be careful not to override the previous one, so change name. So that let me go to viscous net mode. And I will go Reynolds 3 million. 
and we have it there. Okay, so I will run alpha zero. And something that probably you realize and see here, look at that here, you have these small bumps here. Okay, those bumps correspond to the point where you have the transition from laminar to turbine. Okay, we studied this a little bit in, in, in the theory, but you have it there. And that information, you see it here. Okay, so we have free transition, okay? And you have it here. So you have transition about 67% and 66% of the airfoil core. So precisely correspond to, to that. Okay, so this means that you are maintaining laminar flow up to here, okay? And this will translate in a very good property that is low drag, okay? You have low drag, okay? So always look at that when you have the viscous flow, okay, alpha four, and you will see that, okay, not converge and running just, okay. And see that, for instance, in this case, we have the unsaid free transition immediately. So in the top size, you have it immediately, but in the bottom, see that you have this small bump here. This corresponds that you have laminar flow up to here. So you have here positive pressure gradient and then burst pressure gradient. So when we're talking about the theory, also this is the, pre all this is the pressure recovery. And it's a very smooth pressure recovery. This is very desirable property. And if I go back to zero, see that here also it's kind of a flat pressure distribution now opposite to the NACA 2412 as you recall okay it's very different okay so these are very desirable properties okay it's low drag also good lift production and also we look at the moment as well so what is interesting here that we can control in egg foil we can we can control it uh, somehow we, we, we can control the transition so remember that over the potential so solution we're also adding a viscous correction solving some equations and not going into details but in the in the documentation that you have with with, with, with egg foil so as you go here in the source code remember this file here you will have a very good explanation about that theory well not so very good but then you you will go to the paper so. So you have everything explained there. But basically you are solving now the boundary layer equations with some stability transition criteria, okay? And there are some or summer field equations involved and whatever. So the thing that, what will happen? So see that here we have laminar flow here, then instead of turbulent and here. So we know that here friction coefficient is low and here is larger. So what will happen if we somehow force the flow to become turbulent, let's say here. Okay, so also we saw in this slides that we can force that when actually in some physical airplanes, it's very desirable to force the flow to become turbulent to avoid these laminar separation bubbles because they, they, they can be very dangerous. So that can be also controlled in it, and that is what I want to show you. So if we go here, no interrogation point, and See here that you have many options and we're interested in this one, VPAR. Okay, so these are change boundary layer parameters. So as we enter VPAR, see that is another submenu and see that here is giving you some, some options. So, so the option set by default are this one. So this is transition top side, bottom side. One means is natural transition, but I can say I want transition at 0 0.2 means 20% of the core. So you can force that. And this is related to, this is the critical uh, amplification number. Okay, so also we can play with this value. Most of the time, this is okay, but depending on what you are doing. So lower values means uh, larger intensity, turbulence level, okay? So if you put 0 0.2, it means that you have a large intensity level. If you put that one to 14, 16, it's a, a low intensity level, okay? And these are some parameters also related just to the numerics. I'm not going to detail about that, okay? About formulation and how to solve equations. But we're interested in this, forcing this parameter. So if I go question mark there, see that you can control that here. So we're interested in this one. So see that you can here change critical amplification number is this exponent or EN model that we're using. And you have some other options there. But the important one are these two, and I will play with this one, XTR. XTR there. And see that it's talking about these trips lines, no? To trip the flow to become uh, terminal. 
So pay attention to the drag coefficient that we have here, okay? So see that in top surface, I want to force the flow to become turbulent at 0.1. And the same in the bottom. So now you set that, to control it, you set that, just show, and it's showing you the parameters. And now we're ready to run. So let's run this simulation again, alpha zero. So see that CD00376, if I run this one, as expected, 00799 is larger, okay? So see that now we're forcing the flow, see, and you see the influence here to become torrent. So this have a lot of implications we saw in the, during the lectures. Now, the most important one is that you are kind of bursting that, that laminar separation bubble that in some cases can be very dangerous. At high the Reynolds number, three millions, they are not very dangerous, but there are, sometimes you can operate a lower range of about half a million, 300,000, 100,000. And there, those laminar separation bubbles can be really dangerous because it will occupy, you know, a large, you know, percentage of the airflow and they can propagate and then they burst and you lose, uh, you lose uh, leaf and increase drag. Okay, so this is a, you see that it's an artificial mechanism just to trigger turbulence. Okay, eliminate that. You are going to increase drag, but well, you are getting rid of that, that bubble. So let, let's go back, B par, XTR. So if you want to go laminar, put one and one. So da, 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 let me go also here. So I run the case and see that this is the parameters that, that, that we, we have. So let me take screenshot here just to compare values okay so now I don't recall if I okay yeah I have natural transition alpha zero and this is it okay so see that now we have these values so we compare with the previous one see that total drag, okay, in the previous one where our trigger is larger, okay? But what is interesting, look at that, okay, all the values are larger, okay? But sometimes it may happen that the pressure pressure uh, drag CDP, the pressure component is lower, okay? And your total drag can be, can be lower because this is the one that is going to contribute more. So it is a balance, it's a compromise, okay? In this case, it's not the, this is not the case where some, some occasions it happen. I see that also, well, by adding that one also, we're losing a little bit leaf, okay, moment, but see that by adding, increasing the, the turbulence, see that we're ga gaining in the moment something, okay, the, the moment coefficient, see that is, is lower than this one. And this is something also that we should always look at, the moment coefficient, okay, because it's very important for the stability part, okay, because to compensate this pitch down moment, we need to add, you know, a force in detail, or if you have uh, <coughs> canards, you, you will need to add some, some force there, and now usually that to train the airplane, that will add drag, but also you might lose some lift, okay, so proud as you start to do now the whole configuration, maybe at the end of the day, this even if you produce more drag, this will be better because you have lower trim drag. Okay, so always look at that component. Okay, it's moment. All coefficients are important. So that is what, what I, I wanted to show you. And now also let's play with this critical amplification number. Okay, so as you say, if you put a low value, means that you have larger uh, intense, uh, turbulence intensity. Okay, so the effect will be so this XTR parameters that we're using is local and saying in what position of my airfoil I want to, tri uh, to trigger you know, the transition to turbulence. But if you, I do it globally using this one, I don't need to specify that it will be something global. Okay, so let's go again, B power, and that you change it here, okay? So uh, values larger than nine, more laminar, lower than nine, more turbulence. So I will go here to, to the lower li, low, low, lower value. Okay, show. Okay, and see that now I have a, uh, a global effect. And see that I put it l lower and see that my turbulence intensity here is larger. It's also computing that if you, if you know. So for instance, let me put here 16, you type show, 
and see that it's a very low turbulence intensity level. So that is lamina Practice you are working with gliders. This is what you are going to do. And lower values, usually in turbo, uh, turbo machinery is where you have that one. But also it might happen that it's your start aerodynamics, you have it, so you put it. So it's up to you, okay? So I will work with two, a large value. So you see that you have large intensity value. And let's run again. So if I go alpha, so what we're going to expect here is that now globally, we have a, a large turbulence intensity. So we're not going to expect this, this, this bubble. Okay, let's see what happens. See that kind of disappear. And still you have some behavior, but see that also globally it has an effect. We can compare again now the CD, how we have it. So see that here, CD in comparison when, when we, we, we trip the turbulence here close to the leading edge. Okay, I lost that file, the, the previous case. But the value since that is lower, but also moments see that still larger. So, Triggering a transition to turbulence here close to the leading edge. In conclusion, have a positive effect in moment, but that is something that you, you need to, to analyze, okay? So see that this is how to control transition. And also would like to show you something. Also, well, we study how to save the CP distribution, different airflow, we have different distributions, okay? Be careful about that. Uh, so also something that I want to show you that here we have CP distribution in function of the core, but also we have something here that this plot, they call it here the G width uh, CPV. I don't like this plot, but basically you have these arrows. So where, where you have the, the arrows going out of the airfoil means negative pressure and going in the airfoil positive pressure. So here you can see kind of the distribution. Honestly, I don't like it. Some people like it. Sometimes, yeah, it's, so if you misinterpret this, one can give you can give you problems, okay? So I prefer to stick with, with this kind of airfoils, okay? Or of plots, okay? So see the difference, okay? So out of the airfoil, negative CP towards, no, the airfoil, positive CP. So here, CP positive, positive, negative, negative, positive. So as you compare CPX, see that you have here negative, the positive region, negative, and then here in the leading, in the leading edge, the stagnation point. So it's up to you. Uh, additional plots that you have here with this boundary layer corrections that you, you, you can also here see that you have this commands BL. So you can plot boundary layer profiles, stuff like that. And also you can save that, that information. Okay, so for instance, okay, BL, BLA, see that, here it's giving you the information. Well, you have you now those profiles and see that kind of, you have some profiles there. It's difficult to see, but you have you no know, the, the boundary layer, you no know, profile, you have it there with these functions. Again, I just invite you know, just to, 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 to see what, what are these functions, okay? From fluid mechanics also think uh, moment, it's moment displacement and all that stuff. And finally, the other plot that I like to have, okay, it is something that we can also plot that probably is easier to, to see you now the effect now of this transition, or also we can plot the, the, the friction coefficient you know, over the surface. So to plot the, the friction coefficient, okay, there is another option here. Okay, so let me go here. So see that you have many options. Okay, sequence, um, grid, B plot, B plot, okay? Boundary layer variable plots, okay? So we go B plot, see that is another sub menu, and you have here the options, okay? So here you have a few, the, the description and everything. So see here that you can plot age, you know, the shape parameters, the star and theta, H velocity, skin friction, dissipation coefficient, amplification rate, all this you can plot it. Okay, but I'm interested in CF. CF, and here you go. So see that you have it in function of the core and see that here you clearly see, we, we see the effect now of this transition point and critical amplification number. So see here that you have laminar boundary layer and then on set of turbulent boundary layer, and then it's turbulent, okay? So here clearly you see that when you have turbulent boundary layer, you have more screen friction, 
Okay, but it might happen that your pressure drag is lower, so the contribution would be positive. You will need to analyze that. So you have many plots here. Okay, it's up to you to choose which one you, you want to use. I like to use this one, but okay, you have it there. Also see that you, you, you add, if what we recall, see that you have, you can write this information. Okay, so see that you have this down command and it will write this again. So as you go here in my air files, Okay, see here that you will have CF and you will have that information. Okay, for this specific no angle of attack that we're installing. Okay, so I think at this point is all for this for this case. Okay, so in these first three videos we we studied you know, the most important things. Then the other videos I'm going to address a little bit you now the other models that we have menus or modules that we have here. So. This one, complex mapping designs or face speed design. So this is for optimization. And this one, geometry design. Okay, how to modify the airfall. Okay, so here, for instance, you want to change curve, but you add flaps, slabs, stuff like that. You, you can do it. Okay, so it can be an airfall generated using NACA, this, this function, or it can be an external airfall. Okay, so you can control that with that. So this will be you now the subject of the, of the next videos. Okay, thank you for your attention. See you next time. Bye.